At five-year intervals, the International Union of Forest Research Organizations convenes a World Congress. At those gatherings, a limited number of awards are presented for scientific achievement, and I'm reading this so that I get it right. Among those are the EUFRO World Congress Host Scientific Awards. The recipients are regarded as the preeminent forest scientists of contemporary times in the host country and have unchallengeable international standing in the scientific community. At the Congress currently being held in Salt Lake City, Utah, Dr. Harold Burkhart is one of three worthy recipients. He has been on the faculty of the Department of Forest Resources and Environmental Conservation at Virginia Tech since 1969 and now serves as a university distinguished professor there. It's a pleasure and an honor to have him here today. Dr. Burkhart, welcome. Thank you. Now, Professor Burkhart, I've given a little bit about who you are. Now, could you tell us a little bit more about your career and what you do? Well, initially in my career, I spent a lot of time teaching undergraduates, but as time went on, I became a lot more involved in research and graduate education. And now I spend most of my time writing research proposals, conducting research in conjunction with graduate education, and mentoring graduate students. I see. And now, I want to talk about the award you got today from UFRO. You have, I checked you out on, on the web, and you have a whole boatload of awards. Does this one have particular significance for you? Well, it really does, and primarily by the way that it came about, and that is Different scientists from around the world, a group of four initially contacted me. They were from four different countries, from Canada, the United States, Australia, and Portugal, and asked if they could place me a nomination. And I mean, just that alone was a high honor, let alone actually being selected. And others in other countries and in many different parts of the United States, I'm told, suggested that I be nominated for this particular award and that's really made it special. That is, this kind of support from so many people, from so many parts of the world, really does exemplify the collaboration and support and cooperation that you find within UFRO. You've been, had a relationship I guess with UFRO for quite a while now, have you not? Quite a long time. I started in the early 1970s in terms of really being involved in UFRO and then started serving in various capacities after the World Congress in 1981 and held different kinds of offices including a stint on the executive committee but mainly working group or research group uh, kinds of offices and really find it, found it to be extremely rewarding. In, in what ways? Now, by knowing different cultures, different ways of relating to forest, and different ways of approaching research, the different ways that research problems are formulated and, and articulated in different societies, it really is very helpful as you begin to understand your own particular situation better when you can start to see different views and different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, now, this morning you were speaking and you mentioned that you think that the opportunities for young people are almost endless right now in terms of forest science. I think they are because forests are obviously going to be important to society, increasingly so in many ways because we need the building materials, we need renewable energy sources, we also need to preserve biodiversity, recreational areas, wildlife habitat, and certainly water is going to be a tremendous issue for all countries in the future here. As we begin to look at the interaction between, for example, water yields and forest management. So I just see that no matter what a person's interest might be, whether they're interested in social science, biological sciences, or quantitative and managerial sciences or whatever, the needs are going to be tremendous in the future. But one of your colleagues also mentioned this morning that, that sort of the urbanization of North America is, is tending to 
divorce people from the reality of the forest. And it seems to me that in some cert certain countries, uh, they've been having trouble filling forestry schools. Uh, I know that one in my country, Canada, has actually closed its undergraduate program. How do you, how do you address that? How do you get around that? Yeah, it's true that our students are different. When I was an undergraduate, a sizable number of the students had rural backgrounds, came from farms, ranches, and so on. And a number, of course, came from urban areas as well. Uh, but now it is somewhat of a different constituency that we're trying to appeal to and to present to them what the challenges and opportunities are if they come into a forestry field. And so it will not really be desirable uh, if, if we decrease the emphasis on basic forestry education. I think there's going to be a need for that long into the future. And speaking for yourself now, is there a specific achievement of yours that you have achieved, <laughs> to be redundant, that you find or you feel is exceptional in your career? I think probably my greatest accomplishment has been to mentor a large number of graduate students who've gone on to have very successful careers themselves. And there's nothing more satisfying than helping other people to achieve their goals. That's terrific. And going forward, what will you be investing your time in in the next few years? In the next couple of years, I'll be spending a lot of time with regard to larger landscape, watershed, and whole regional issues throughout the southeast. We're involved in a large uh, project that has to do with climate and southern conifers. And uh, Excuse me, where is that located? It's across the southeastern U.S. It's all of the states from Virginia south to Florida and then across into East Texas. Okay. So that's where you'll be spending your time and your... Well, I'll be spending a lot more time on some of these issues having to do with concerns over climate and what it means with regard to forest productivity and sustainability in the future. Most of my past work has been more on forest management issues and trying to model the impacts and effects of genetic improvement, different silvicultural treatments. Now we're t uh, turning more attention, and there will be a lot of attention devoted these next couple of years, on incorporating the environmental influences, primarily climate influences on forests. I see. Dr. Burkhart, thank you very much for your time, and congratulations on your award. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you.